Welcome to the Team Soma Circus Live video. Today on the left side, we have Sprite Bestial. As well, on the right side, we have it's Plunder Brave or Brave Plunder Patrol. Before I get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. You know, with the algorithm, it makes people want to watch our videos. And we're going to see that Sprite here is going to go first by normal summoning off a Nimble Beaver. And it's going to be summoning out the Angler here. Very, very good. Getting a two level twos on the field, as well as, you know, having that interruption, or I guess the being able to add back that beaver with the toad that they're most likely going to set up here and we're going to see a prosperity here vanishing uh three cards from next deck most likely we saw them banishing the mannequin cat so we can assume that they are playing some like newman probably in the extra deck or in the side deck we're going to see change of heart the ttt as well as i think it was a bestial there we saw the bestial being, or it was a jet being there. Fetch jet's going to be special summoned to control a level two. And then just be able to search for a starter, smashers, or a uh, double cross. Going for a starter there. And uh, yeah, I think we saw a Valor in the hand as well. We're going to link away for a sprite. Uh, sprite. And not not sprite angler. We're gonna see a sprint, and uh, sprint's gonna be able to send the angler here, especially out two level two beavers from the deck. Looks like he's debating what he wants to send. We we saw him go over the angler already. Maybe he's on three anglers. Sending the angler there, they're going to activate the effect of the angler. We're going to summon out two beavers. And it looks like here. We have, well, I mean, pretty much beaver here. And normal summoning beaver is pretty much full combo as well. Be able to summon out. We're going to see a uh, gigantic being summoned here, leaving the uh, the sprint onto the field. So this is going to be part of their end board. They're going to activate the gigantic effect. They're going to chain the Magnemut, and that's going to be uh, chained to their opponent's Magnemut as well, keeping that Magnemut in hand. And it's going to resolve here, detaching the Beaver to summon out most likely a Swap Frog. So swap frog effects going to send another swap frog. Then we're going to most likely link off the beaver and the gigantic. Oh, we're linking off. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say you definitely leave swap frog on the field. Going for that uh, elf. Elf effects going to summon back the swap frog. Then we're going to be able to overlay for a gig uh, not gigantic, a totally awesome, which is very very awesome here. Now is that a call by the grave we saw as well? It's another okay so we have the starter here that we added off the jet we're going to summon out either a red or a carrot we're going to summon out blue here which is going to search us for the red or carrot also gets a blue into the rotation so we're going to go for that red and it also serves as a body so that we can destroy with the red here summon out the red there then we're going to activate the ttt just look at the hand here and we're going to check we're going to see the Truest Worm, it's not going to be that target. And we're going to look at the Golden Hair as well as the Red Beard. And they're going to summon back, they're going to put back the Red Beard there. Which is pretty good for the deck, to be honest. You know, putting them down the three cards, I believe. And they do have a Monster Negate and then an Omni Negate as well as either a Bounce or two more Omni Negates. Because he's during the end phase, we're going to search for that Truest Worm. We're going to draw for turn here, which will let us have five cards in hand, but we do know that we do know only one unknown, technically. And during the standby phase, we're going to see that uh, totally awesome. We're going to summon out the Dupe Frog, protecting the battle. You know, protecting the elf from that battle there, I guess. We're going to see Fateful being activated here. And 
and then they're asked what cards do you know, so we reveal the one unknown. We're going to activate. They're going to toad negate it. And then we're going to see toad effects going to activate, adding back the beaver. And then we're going to chain to the toad effect in graveyard to uh, to add the elf. And then we're going to see a bestial attempt to negate, or attempt to target, and then it's going to be negated by red there. So we did burn down two of the cards so far. There's two cards left in the hand. And we have one Toad Negate, but I think that if they just normal summons, it's not going to get negated because I don't think it has any effect. But, you know, and we can't do the uh, Sprint Bounce, unfortunately. I see a normal summon of the Golden Hair, which is uh, linked to in itself. If it links off into Almirage, then summons itself back. You know, that isn't enough material. Just to look like we're thinking here. Looking at the graveyard for a... Uh, it doesn't look too good, I mean, to be honest. Going into Blackbeard is not going to do very much. I mean, I guess potentially, yeah, it looks like they're going to go for the Blackbeard here. So they're potentially going for the Almirage and stuff, and then going, leaving that Magnum on the field to it can go into battle phase could be decent, but it's going to get, we're going to see Blackbeard getting Valored, and that's just a, uh, I feel like that just that just you just scoop there, to be honest. We do see that he did draw a it's a ship shipyard the unknown card here. But I do not think it's gonna do very much. So I'm just gonna scoop it up and go to the next game. Unfortunately, you know, Sprite is able to put up some formidable boards sometimes, and you're just not able to beat it, which makes you know, that's why it's a tier one deck. I think the deck is very, very good. Even going first versus tier, if you're able to set up your full board, um, it's just crazy. Then going second, it's uh, sometimes harder to to uh, to break some of the boards. But they have lots of cards that are capable of breaking boards, which is what I think is the funnest part. I don't know. I really like Sprite. I think Sprite's extremely fair. <laughs> like, when you look at tier, thirds of tier is just kind of crazy. I also like how, like, the Beaver, I mean, Sprint itself is a crazy card. Elf is a crazy card. I think we're going to see Elf on the ban list by the end of the year. Definitely in some way, shape, or form. Um, And once again, we see it. Swap Frog is, you know, corrupting the meta, I guess. It's even finding its way into uh, some tier builds as well. But I think it's very interesting, you know. We saw throughout the years how um, Swap Frog has just been, like, in, like, so many different decks. Decks that are kind of great, in my personal opinion. I mean, I like playing Paleo Frogs. Here we're going to see the Plunder player start off by activating... A Red of Aramisir playing out the Fateful Adventure as well as summoning up that token. Then we're going to activate the effect here, searching for the Draco back by normal summoning a monster. And we're going to link both of those off into, uh, into the Blackbeard here. That's Definitely interesting. We're not even searching for any monster and discarding it this turn. That's kind of crazy. That's uh, very, very unusual. I don't know why you would do that. We're going to see a normal summon of a carrot. And then we're going to see a special summon of a blue. And we're going to activate the effect of the blue. And... They're going to be activating the effect of Blackbeard. They're going to chain the Ash Blossom. It's going to be good. 
don't think there's two sets. I'm so amazed that they didn't search for uh for the monster and then discard. So you see Jet Special Summons out. And then Jet's going to be able to search for most likely a Smashers or a Starter. With two cards in the back, you maybe. And you do have a care on the field. But. Yeah, going for the Smashers definitely seems like the right play here, in my personal opinion. And we do see an Angler in hand. So we're gonna, if they're going to special summon out um, the Swap Frog off of the Gigantic Sprite, they're going to be able to bounce it back to hand and then be able to activate the effect. We're going to see Sprint Effect here. And is that going to get stopped? Maybe they're trying to... Uh, it's going to get judgmented. Okay, interesting. See, someone's going to get judgmented, making it going down 4,000 life points. Um, that's a... I don't think that's what they intended to do here. I don't think they wish to... You know, I can understand, like, this wishing is an imperm or something like that to be able to stop the uh, effect so you just, you know... Overlay into a gigantic, gigantic effect. Summon out the swap frog, then swap return to hand. Do that, but destroying the other monster is kind of, kind of hard. There, we're gonna banish the gigantic and then uh, banish the carrot as well as the blackbeard. And then with an angler left in hand, I think that's gonna be it. You're gonna activate any fateful to summon out the token. Then we're gonna activate the effect, searching for the. Uh, Griffin, then we're going to discard that Draco back. Draco back is going to equip itself. And we're going to put something out with the Griffin here. Maybe they were trying not to get their stuff over or something. I don't even know. I just feel like you definitely do that. You turn, turn one. Then we're going to see a normal summon of a... Uh, we have Plunder Patrol monster, then they're gonna link away into the Blackbeard there. Turning off that negate, they're gonna act for the effect, and it's gonna get Veilard. They're gonna attack and then pass. They're gonna act for the effect during their opponent's turn, summoning out the Lisp, which is a monster negate. Then we're gonna see a normal summon of an angler, mind control. Why would you Normal summon at first. And then they're just going to scoop it up here. Okay. So we're going to see that uh, somehow the sprite player got a uh, beat game two. Not opening the greatest, you know, getting that um, sprint judgment in definitely hurt the deck a lot. And I guess they had the, uh, there's no way they, yeah, they definitely didn't, they had a Valor in hand, yeah, so they didn't have anything they could do there. Quite unfortunate. See some shuffling up. And you know, this time the sprite player is not gonna. I guess they're gonna get to choose who's gonna go first or second. Um, judgment was pretty crazy. I'm surprised they didn't judgment the normal summon. I mean, they didn't have another hand trap, so it kind of makes sense to uh, if you judgment the normal summon, and then you have like an ash blossom. Sprite just cannot play. If you just if you ash the uh, the starter, you're pretty much just sitting there because they've already wasted their normal summon. If you just pop the normal summon as well. They're struggling unless they have like a crazy hand like Swap Frog, Angler, like a Beaver, and like a Starter. Then at that point, you're just that's like full gas, right? It, it luckily rarely happens. But saving that, uh, saving it for the um, that Sprint was definitely, as we saw, it proved quite well. I guess also you could do that on the Gigantic, too, if you would really like to. Um, but stopping that body on the field definitely made sense. We do see that they summoned the... Uh, they have the Newman in hand, which is very, very unfortunate. That's why I stopped playing. 
the uh the, the cards because I just always saw it every time, no matter what I did. I would just always see it and just bothered me so much. Like if I played two of them, I'd see both of them. If I played one of them, I'd see one of them. So you're gonna normal summon swap frog. Swap fact's gonna send itself. Then we're gonna set one card and bounce back swap and pass. Playing the right of air material, summoning out that token, placing that fateful adventure on the field. Not a great opening. I mean, that would tend to mean for me that we have our opponent has lots of hand traps. We're going to defeat the fateful effect, and they just throw their cards onto the uh, table. Searching for that Griffin Rider, then discarding um, Draco back, and then Draco back is going to equip itself. We're going to summon out that Griffin. Then we're going to normal summon, I believe that is Whitebeard. Then we're going to link both of them away for the Blackbeard here. And then we are going to be able to search or special summon out the uh, the golden hair. Then we're going to act for the effect. You know, we do. It's only water. Summoning out uh, the mother, mother Blackbeard here. And we can see we have Swap Frog Newman, not very good. Then we're going to act for the, the, uh, the effect of the black eyes. Summing itself out. Here we can deal some damage. We're going to attack for 2,000. Oh, we're going to attack for a whole bunch. And actually just set one card in main phase 2. And uh, you don't think that's going to be... You don't think there's anything else. We're going to activate the Swap Frog by sending the Newman here. Then we're going to special out the Jet. We're going to be chaining the Blackbeard here. the black eyes and then we're gonna be able to summon out the uh the mark then we're in search for the uh the starter here so now we have a banish i believe that's what mark does the dark one discard one planet patrol card then target one effect monster your opponent controls banish it then you can add a spell and trap from your deck to your hand the planet patrol okay then we're going to activate Triple Tactics Talents here. They're going to chain the Mork. Sending the Whitebeard to banish the uh, Swap Frog. Then search for the Plunder... Uh, the Field Spell. And then they're going to take the Mork. And then we're going to see, you know, that Red Beard being summoned. But they don't actually have, they don't have any more zones to equip. I never thought that would become a problem. Here I think is if they do link it away, then they will be able to summon back a monster. Oh, they'll be able to summon with that red beard. We're going to link away and what else can you can you really do here going for a sprint it looks like sprint effect going to activate and or it looks like they're thinking on the summon actually there's no way you're keeping a judgment in there's no way we're going to activate forbidden droplets here we have so many cards we can send we could send to the uh we're sending a monster from our hand, which is a temple. They're going to chain the uh, the smashers here. Very unfortunate. I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't chain a spell. Why wouldn't they not send a spell card? When you're playing around the really the, any of the options. And we're going to see that sending the angler, two beavers being summoned. And I guess you want that free advantage from that temple, but at the same time, I just don't think it's really worth it. You know that there's not really much they can activate to, to 
you really like stop it then you don't have a trap card to send even though i don't think there's a trap that you respond to is there any monster that could respond that would save the uh the sprint Then we're gonna see the uh, mannequin cat summon out the morgue, and then you're gonna activate the mannequin cat effect here. Being able to summon out most likely a blue from the deck. You're gonna activate the blue effect. Searching for the red. Then we're going to go into the battle phase and we're going to attack into the Blackbeard that does not have a monster equipped to it. Then we're going to be able to overlay into the Zeus because we have our downward and then to the Zeus because we have not yet activated that starter in our hand nor the Gigantic. Then we're going to activate the Zeus effect here. Wiping the entire board. That was crazy. I, I didn't think that there was going to be a way that they could uh, actually come back from this. From that horrible hand there but it looks like they can even have another zeus wipe or uh, they don't have another zeus wipe my bad they had to act for the mannequin cat effect here we're going to see a starter being activated summoning out i mean a carrot and they're going to summon out their red from their hand And yeah, it looks quite good for them. The point does have a, uh, they're gonna overlay once again for a gigantic, interesting. Activating the effect, summoning out maybe the third swap frog if they play it. Summon a dupe frog. Interesting choice there. Then they're gonna summon, Oh, then they can bring back the elf and they can summon out Toad. Okay, I get you. Summon out the Swap Frog and then they're going to overlay for a totally awesome. So they ending up with the negate anyways. Choosing the Toad negate, which is going to be practically two negates and a follow-up. We're going to activate a Dark Ruler no more. That's crazy. We have the Temple as well to banish to add the Array of Aramis here. here. They're going to activate the right, summoning out the token in attack position. Activating the plunder patrol shipyard. Discarding that white beard to search for the black eyes. Summoning out here, I think that was white beard. I'm, I apologize once again for the glare. We are working on trying to figure out a place to not have it. They're summoning out the black beard. Not all of, unfortunately, not all of our tripods have the. Uh, the ring light on it so we have some glare with the lights but we are we are working on trying to get all three uh ring lights set up so here we're going to be seeing the scaring of a lightning storm seeing lots of going second cards we're going to see the blackbeard or the blackbeard summoning it out getting out the uh the red ship, Brawn. Equipping the red beard and summoning out another one. I think that is the list. I find the pot of desires. I said that that's actually the golden hair. Checking for the banishes, drawing two cards. Going down so there's like barely any cards left in that deck. They're going to crash into them. They're going to attack into the brawn. And then, you know, swap frogs are totally awesome. We're going to add back that beaver. They're going to draw for turn. They know they have the beaver here. And brawn's making, the fire ship's making everything again attack. I believe most of the stuff's over, uh, like, over 2k. They're going to activate the Imperm. They're going to negate the Imperm there with the Brawn. And that's going to be able to search for a um, Planet Patrol monster. And then summoning out the Golden Hair here. 
they still have that beaver. So they're gonna act with the beaver, they're gonna target the uh, angler, and or doesn't target, just summon out one of them from the graveyard here, or the deck, choosing the graveyard, because you know you wanna keep as many beavers as possible in the other deck. Looking at the graveyard, any indication that they have a, uh, a bestial in hand? I just don't think they have enough. Overlaying here for most likely a, gigant a gigantic. Activating the gigantic effect chart change ch chain chaining. My bad for that. To target the dark ship, summoning itself out, and then you know the ang the gigantic effect is going to activate here, detaching the beaver. To summon out the blue, blue effect is going to activate, searching for the jet. Jet effect is going to summon itself out. And here we're going to search for most likely a starter. Going for the double cross. Respectable. You know, being able knowing that there is going to be a next turn, being able to steal one of their monsters, very, very crucial. We're going to see a elf here targeting these totally awesome, bringing itself back. And here you could link away the Jerusalem and the uh, Gigantic. Just asking about life points here. What we're seeing. The last card in hand is known, but what link two could we go for? Looks like they're thinking. They're under battle phase. Jewish Trump's gonna attack into the golden hair. You wanna see totally awesome attack into the uh the white beard that's in defense position, I believe. Then we're going to see during the main phase two, linking off into an IP. Then we're going to see that the Jerusalem is going to be sending the brawn to the graveyard here, leaving them only with a black beard onto the field. Then they're going to activate the effect. Swap frog is going to be chained. Or I keep saying swap frog. Totally awesome is going to be chained here, negating and then adding back that um, beaver. You know. They are going to get activate the effect. They're not going to take the Dark Ruler no more. They just always have it. Um, it's interesting how they did not chain the... Uh, the double cross there. And I could chain to the... I guess you're still going to have that totally awesome negated, but... We are approaching close to time. Um, and here it's going to see the Blackbeard is going to declare and it looks like it's going to declare an attack. And we see Dan comes over looking at the card. Um, we're going to chain the double cross. Uh, and it looks like time has just been called. So they're going to be, um, this is going to be the end of the phase. As soon as we're going to see targeting the totally awesome and the effect of things to summon out. Summon out the list, drawing a card, and uh, they're going to go to battle phase. And unfortunately, it's going to be game. And I believe the sprite player is lower on the life points here. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.